In today's video, we'll discuss my first 96 hours on the road as a full-time RVer, driving from Missouri to where I'm at now, Colorado. What is going on YouTube? Obviously, I am not in Missouri anymore. I'm in the middle of Colorado on some BLM land, but I'll talk about that more later. It's really sunny this morning. It's like 6 a.m. I just woke up and I figured I'd talk about my first 96 hours in my rig. Most of that was me driving from Missouri to Colorado. If you watched any of my live streams about my trip plans, I was originally going to go to Acadia National Park in Maine and then cross the Canadian border and explore Nova Scotia a little bit. However, with the COVID outbreak being so bad in the east and my chances of getting across the Canadian border slim to none, I decided to change my plans because that didn't make much sense. I decided to head out west where there's lots of national forest and BLM land that I could camp on. And some of the national parks are beginning to open up out here. So I thought it would just be easier for me to explore beautiful scenery while practicing social distancing. I also wanted to escape the heat wave of Missouri in the Midwest. During the night, it gets down into the low 50s. So I get nice and snuggly in my RV. It's been great. Okay, first, let's talk about my route. A friend of mine who happens to be another van life YouTuber Amber from the channel Story Chasing, you should go check it out. It's pretty awesome. It's one of the first van life channels I found. Well, she invited me out to Salida. This seemed like a good first trip. Amber's been RVing for over three years now and exploring the country. She's very familiar with boondocking on BLM land. And I figured it was a great way for me to ease into it and learn how to boondock on public lands. When I pulled up the route on Google Maps from DeSoto, Missouri to Salida, Colorado, I noticed that three of my remote year travel buddies were within 100 miles or so of Salida, so I decided to visit them as part of my trip. My friend Lindsay was up in Loveland, Colorado, riding out COVID at her parents' house, and they graciously offered to let me camp out in their driveway for a night. My friends Abby and John had rented an awesome house in Breckenridge, Colorado, so after I visited Lindsay in Loveland, Colorado, I was gonna head down to Breckenridge, Colorado and visit Abby and John. If you're new to my channel, I had just spent 12 months traveling with remote year with Lindsay, Abby, and John. They're like family to me, so it was gonna be great to visit and reconnect with them. Okay, so my trip was set. I was gonna drive from DeSoto, Missouri to Salida, Colorado, stopping at Loveland, Colorado, and Breckenridge, Colorado. When I pulled up the distance from DeSoto, Missouri to Loveland, Colorado, I realized it was 14 hours and I was gonna need to stop somewhere and stay overnight on the way there. I just signed up for Harvest Toast a month ago and if you haven't heard of it, it's pretty cool. I paid around $60 for an annual membership and with that membership, you get access to thousands of wineries, breweries, golf courses, and farms across the country that allow you to camp on their land in exchange for buying something like at the wineries, going in and doing a wine tasting, buying maybe a bottle of wine, at the golf courses, maybe hitting a few balls or playing around a golf, at the breweries, obviously drinking some beer, and then at the farms, buying some of the farm products. So I jumped on Harvest Host's website. It's really cool, you can search by route. And you can also narrow it down to how far the Harvest Host location is from your route. So I narrowed that down to only a few miles. And I found a farm in Manhattan, Kansas, not Manhattan, New York, where I used to live, Manhattan, Kansas. And so I decided to stay there. I called up the owner and let them know I was gonna be passing through and if I could stay on their farm. They said no problem, so I was set. It was about a six hour drive from DeSoto to Manhattan, Kansas. If you've never driven I-70 through Missouri and Kansas, it's a pretty boring ride, but eventually I arrived at my Harvest Host location called A&H Farms. It had just downpoured, so the farm was really muddy, but I found a nice little grassy area, and then I headed in to check in with the owner and see what kind of products they offered. They had some really awesome stuff, and I went a little bit overboard. I got some pickled garlic, some mango salsa, and some sweet butter pickles. After that, I headed out to my rig, settled in for the night, watched a couple episodes of Seinfeld and Big Bang Theory, 
and then went to sleep. I knew I had to get up early because I was gonna have an eight hour drive in front of me to Loveland, Colorado. The next morning, I got up at 4.30 a.m., got back on I-70 and headed towards my friend Lindsay's parents' house. The drive on I-70 through Western Kansas and Eastern Colorado was pretty similar to my previous day's drive. It's very flat. Not much to see. Eventually, as I got closer to Loveland, Colorado, you could see the mountains in the background, and that was pretty cool. I pulled in Lindsay's driveway about 2 a.m. and hung out with her parents for the rest of the night. They were really gracious hosts. They're originally from Nebraska, Midwestern, just like me, and they made me a traditional Midwestern meal, which was pretty awesome. At about 10 p.m., I climbed in my rig and went to sleep for the night. I woke up the next morning, had a cup of coffee with her family and some great conversation again, and then jumped in my rig and headed towards Breckenridge, Colorado and Abby and John. However, before that shorter two and a half hour trip, I wanted to stop at a car wash and spray down my rig. It was really muddy from staying at the farm the other night. Unlike the Midwest where almost no car wash will accommodate an RV, RVing is so popular in Colorado Every car wash can accommodate a huge RV. It was pretty awesome. My small rig fit in easily. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. The YouTube algorithm will show this video to more people, the more thumbs up and the more comments I have. So I appreciate you doing that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. After the van was clean, I headed down to Breckenridge, Colorado. I say down, but most of the trip was up. Loveland, Colorado is at about 5,000 feet elevation. Breckenridge is at about 10,000 feet. So I needed to go up in elevation about a mile. The drive to Breckenridge is gorgeous, but I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous going up and down the mountain slopes. I'd never done that kind of driving in this rig, and I was pretty uncomfortable on the mountainous roads, especially when there was construction that narrowed the road down to one lane. Eventually, the road flattened out and I just enjoyed the beautiful scenery on the way to Breckenridge. After a few hours, I arrived at Abby and John's house in Breckenridge. There were actually six people in the house that had completed a remote year program, but only John and Abby were in my program. It was pretty cool to meet some other people that had done remote year. We all kind of have a similar view on life and travel. I got there shortly after noon and a group of us decided to go on a hike. The hike was pretty amazing. It was beautiful. I hadn't hiked at that high of an elevation since I hiked Rainbow Mountain back in Peru. And so I was a little winded during the hike. However, it was worth it. The views were stunning. There was even snow at the altitude we were at. After the hike, Abby, John, and I decided to go get a bite to eat and have a couple beers. And it was just great catching up with them. After dinner, I jumped in my rig and just like every other night, camped in their driveway. I left pretty early the next morning to head to Salida, Colorado, but not before Abby and I fit in a quick morning hike in her neighborhood. Okay, now it was time to head to my final destination, Salida, Colorado, for some boondocking on BLM land. The drive to Salida, just like the drive in the Breckenridge, was a little treacherous in the beginning. The only thing that made it a little easier was the speed limit was usually around 25 miles an hour. Eventually that drive leveled out a little bit and I met Amber in a parking lot in Salida, Colorado. Salida is a really cool little town, really popular with RVers. It has a river that runs through the town and we stopped in a park and had lunch. After lunch, we both jumped in our rigs and headed towards some BLM land about 10 miles away to join a group of escapers that had already been camped there. If you don't know, there is a ton of land in the US that's managed by the Bureau of Land Management. That's why it's called BLM land. As a taxpayer, you're entitled to camp on that land for up to 14 days without having to pay anything. It's a pretty awesome thing we have here in the US. And I was really excited to be camping with a group of individuals who could teach me the do's and don'ts of BLM camping. So I picked my spot set up camp, and I've been enjoying it for the last five days. Okay, so that was my first 96 hours traveling in my rig. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. But if you're like the worst person in the world and you like kick puppies, you're the kind of person that'll give a thumbs down. Thanks for watching.